All right, so here's a little example showing what's going on here. Okay, so here we have uh, our peer cap, and we have our columns. There's, right, this is a three-column peer. Okay, and it's assumed that our hinge locations are going to be at the top and at the bottom of our column. Right, so we have a moment at the top and a moment at the bottom associated with our lateral forces, which are going to be coming in up here somewhere. Right, because these will be coming in at the superstructure level. So we have that lateral force at the superstructure level, which is then uh, going to generate um, additional axial loads in these members, but it also generate um, some bending moments in these members as well. Okay, so basically uh, you take this column, right, and then this column is going to have a calculated uh, MN value, or it'll it'll have an associated uh, PM diagram, right? Because your your MN is actually going to vary based on your axial, right? Your moment capacity and your axial capacity are related. So all you would do is uh, draw your diagram here, right? And you're going to draw this for uh, basically what they say is draw it for your earthquake uh, load case, um, assuming uh, zero earthquake. Okay. So what they what they're getting at with that is essentially you're designing for dead load only or um, dead plus earthquake, earthquake live, and that's going to be multiplied by a factor of 1.25. Okay, so here we're showing 1.25 DC because usually um, the typical assumption is that the live load is zero during the earthquake. So 1.25 DC, we're going to come out here and we're going to figure out at 1.25 DC, based on our, PN, our PM diagram, this is where our MN is. Okay, and then all we're going to do is uh, slide things over by a factor of 1.3 because we have concrete columns. And then that's going to get us this new curve, okay, which is going to be our um, overstrength curve or our plastic curve, right? And then uh, notice the, the axial doesn't change at all. It's just the moment that is increased by a factor of 1.3. So it's literally the same curve just slid over to the right, okay? And then we're going to come down there, and then that's going to give us our overstrength moment. Okay, so we figure out our overstrength moment um, in the column. Okay, and then for plastic hinging conditions, what's going to happen is you're going to get a hinge at the top and the bottom, and you're going to have the same moment top and bottom typically. Or I guess that they could be different. Typically, you're going to have about the same moment top and bottom. Okay, um, so you're going to take uh, your moment at the top plus your moment at the bottom, and then divide that by um, LB, which is going to be uh, the clear height of the column. All right, and then that's going to get you uh, your plastic shear force. Okay, so that's a procedure for calculating your plastic shear force, and then you would compare this with um, your uh, V elastic over R. Okay, and you take the minimum of um, your V plastic there, or your V elastic over R. Okay, and that would end up being um, your then your seismic design shear would be the minimum of those two.